What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about granular synthesis in Faceplant, or at least how you can get a very similar type of sound out of Faceplant that kind of mimics granular synthesis. So a lot of people have actually been requesting something like, oh, uh, can they please add a granular oscillator inside Faceplant? While I think that could be really cool, I think that the sampler is so advanced that you can get such convincing granular-like sounds already. I think it's a little bit unnecessary. Personally, I would prefer to see some kind of additive oscillator. That being said, it's like, I don't know, but yeah. Um, I wanna show you guys how to create a granular-like sound in Faceplant. So what I'm gonna do here is let's put in a sampler. And obviously, we put in a piano. I wanna put in some reverb over here. In fact, I've actually got a preset that I've made in Snappy called Lead Source. You can actually get this exact same preset in a bunch of my Faceplant 2.0 factory presets. You can just open them up and save this as your own kind of preset inside your library. Anyway, that being said, it's a nice kind of all-in-one reverb, delay, and shimmer kind of rack that I use on a lot of leads and stuff. So what is granular synthesis? Granular synthesis is essentially capturing a very small part of audio and looping it over and over again and essentially creating like an oscillator from that. However, the kind of strength in granular synthesis is being able to scrub through the sample and layer different voices on top. So like I said, the faceplant um, sampler is really advanced because you've got this kind of free looping system which you can modulate. So for example, if we put this length down really low, put the start point at the beginning here, and then we play that sound again, it's just gonna loop the transient of the piano. Which I think is cool, except it's a little bit kind of repetitive. So I think the strength, like I said, comes in when you modulate the start point over here very slowly. So what I wanna do is I want to put in a LFO. Let's set it to ramp up. Let's set it really, really slow. And then let's just get it to modulate the start point ever so slightly. Now we can hold notes. So here's a little tricky thing that we can do now because of the new advanced modulation system. Let's put it in an LFO table. Um, I like this morph one, although there's a bit of a thing here with the transient being at the end. So I just wanna set the phase minus one. Um, and then let's set something like this. So what I wanna do is I wanna get it so that when it reaches the end here, it's gonna trigger this LFO again. So what we wanna do here is put in a remap. So this is similar to that end of cycle thing that I taught you guys in the last one. Except here, what we're gonna do is just get it to create a quick trigger like this, right at the end. And then we're gonna assign this to this. So let's just set this off and see when it triggers. Nice. So what I did there is I triggered a bunch of notes on the keyboard, but one after the other. And then what happens is, I don't know if you saw that little gray, those little gray dots over here. So the whole modulation system inside Faceplant is polyphonic. So what that means is you could potentially have, like I know this readout here is showing this blue dot, but all those other voices have different LFO cycles um, because they were triggered at different times. So this is potentially very interesting because we could, um, I actually wanna set this to, always trigger from note as well as from here. So it triggers at the beginning as well as the end of the cycle. Now, again, like I was saying, because this whole system is polyphonic, for example, if we put in a random and we put the smooth up all the way, 
and we get this to modulate the speed of this ever so slightly and maybe also the start position here. So what happens then is every voice is gonna be slightly differently offset. And that's how you create that really granular like sound. So if we modulate the length as well, we can get these slight variations in the kind of, you hear how it kind of sounds like it's oscillating there. It's kind of got that rattle. We can kind of get changes in the speed of that rattle. But also what I want to do is I want to set this crossfade up quite a bit. Because what that's going to do is it's going to crossfade between the two sample chunks. So you're going to get less of that kind of beating effect and it's going to create more of a wobbling effect. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So the coolest thing about this whole system is we can lock this loop setting over here. And what this does is it keeps everything intact and we can then just cycle through the samples to find one that suits the vibe the best. So this is also really cool on like loop type of samples because you're not necessarily getting tonal stuff but more glitchy type of stuff. And then in combination with that beat repeat thing that I showed you guys, oh, very good results. Awesome, that's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna be uploading these presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you wanna know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. Yeah, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. See you guys next time. Cheers.